Hello, food fanatics, and welcome to today's show, Rome Dipper Dine. I'm your host, Gabby Pujo, and we have a very special guest, Hope Willoughby. Hello. Hope, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Gabby. I'm excited to be here and chat a little bit about food. Of course. And so we're going to be going over the best, the worst, the good and bad about dine-in restaurants in Rome. But I want to start off with a personal question. Mm -hmm. So what does a good quality dine-in experience mean to you? Oh, that's such a good no question. Pressure. No pressure. Ah. So, okay. So anytime that people ask me these kind of questions, like questions that are very general and broad, Matt Delzer always gets so frustrated with me <laughs> because my answer is, well, it depends on my mood, right? Like right. context I mean, matters right. so that's much true. to me uh, because sometimes what I really appreciate about a good dine-in experience is like, you know, a nice atmosphere where I can really relax and focus on conversation and high quality food. And then other times, like I, I just want comfort, right? Like I want to just be able to shove my face full of whatever delicious food I can possibly eat and be in and out of there as fast as possible. I would say that more often I, I kind of fall on the side of, I want a restaurant where I'm going to be able to get good quality food, but it's not just about the quality of food. It's also about having an environment where I'm able to really focus on whoever I'm there with and have some sort of good conversation in a setting where I'm able to feel comfortable. And of course that depends on, you know, whatever it is that I'm hoping to get out of that experience. Am I there, you know, with my family? Am I there on a date? Whatever that ends up being. And how often would you say you have that good quality restaurant experience? Well, here's the thing. I don't actually go out to restaurants too much anymore. I used to a lot before COVID. Um, I have, I, we, we've become a DoorDash family um, in my household. So on the days that I'm not cooking, most often um, I'm, I'm getting DoorDash. Um, and that's really because I've got two kids. So my kids are seven and 11. And so both of my daughters have ADHD and have some issues with like impulsivity and inattentiveness and hyperactivity. So actually taking them out and expecting them to sit still and order and wait can sometimes be a challenge. Um, they're great at other times. They love mellow mushroom because there's enough there to stimulate them and it's <laughs> fine. Um, but a lot of the times I, I am just like door dashing a couple of times a week. I would say maybe once every two or three weeks I'm able to like actually go out and have dinner out. Um, I will say the exception to that is lunch um, because much more often I will just go like grab a quick lunch with a, with a colleague or something. So I'm eating lunch out more often, but those are usually those quicker experiences. Okay. And so I was looking at the restaurants in Rome, mm -hmm. and there's quite a variety in Italian and Mexican restaurants. Mm -hmm. And then there's like a few breakfast restaurants. Mm -hmm. And so I actually made a list of <laughs> yes. the Mediterranean, Italian, and Mexican restaurants. You're so prepared. And I was actually very interested yeah. because it turns out there's a ton of Mexican restaurants. Yeah, so many. And I've gone out to maybe like two of them. Okay. So Where have you been? Which ones have you been to? I've been to La Parrilla. Okay. And that's maybe that one and like another one, but I couldn't even remember. The was other Las, one. Las Palmas the other one? Probably. That's the one that's really popular with college okay. students because it's cheap. There are two locations okay. for Las Palmas. One is right by like Hobby Lobby and the, the Shorter Business School location. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, the other one is over in Riverside by like the Starbucks and the... I've seen that one. Yeah, yeah, so both are by okay. Chick-fil-A's. We have to right. specify like the Chick-fil-A in the shipping right. container. Okay. Um, and that one does karaoke on, oh, what night is it? Thursday nights, okay. I think they do karaoke That's on Thursday fun. night. So that one's fun. Okay. Um, but yeah, my, my go-to for Mexican, and this just proves like what a white Southerner I am. I call it La Perilla. Okay, um, okay. <laughs> so, okay, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's the one you've been okay, to. You yeah. say it much more eloquently than I do. I go to La Perilla, <laughs> or as my children like to call it, La Perillo, okay. because for some reason, yeah. It, um, but that's our go-to for okay. Mexican food. Um, I honestly think it's the best in town, even though it actually is a chain. So mm. it's a chain... Um, around Georgia, because I know there are some going down into like Kennesaw and Atlanta, but that's my go-to, it's my favorite. Okay. I think they're, I'm allergic to chicken, which is like such a tragedy, right? Oh, no, I know. did mention that. Yeah, okay. so I found okay. out about a year ago okay. that I'm allergic to chicken and shellfish, and the biggest part of that tragedy is that like La Perilla's chicken dishes were my life, Are right? There, have you tried, well, I guess not, but they have a chicken soup. 
I love their chicken you tried soup. It? Is that what you've had? Yes. Okay. It's so good. Yes. I every time. That used to be like my go-to option if I was sick, if I didn't feel well. Mm -hmm. It was like I just I just want that chicken soup yeah. from La Perea. Yes. And now I can't have it. And I think he even said to Matt like a week ago, because both of us were kind of sick, you know, in between tournaments. It's like, ugh, we gotta, you know, bounce back right. and feel better. And we were trying to figure out, what do you want for lunch? And I was like, I just want La Perea's chicken soup and now I can't eat it anymore. Yeah. I mean, you could always replace it maybe, like the chicken. For well, and it's chicken broth too. Uh, so that's the hard part. No I can't either. I can't have any Nothing kind of chicken, chicken products. Interesting. So I have okay. mostly switched to like predominantly vegetarian diet. Okay. Um, I will still sometimes eat like beef or pork, mm -hmm. but like I don't want to eat beef and pork every single day. Mm -hmm. So I do eat mostly vegetarian now, but I very much miss Lavria's chicken, yeah. and I also miss Chick-fil-A. Can't eat Chick-fil-A anymore either. That's so true. Mm -hmm. and, okay, besides La Parrilla, have you been to any other Mexican restaurants in La the area? Been to Las Palmas okay. um, uh, quite a bit. Um, El Zarape is a classic, okay. although go that one. Uh, that one, so, <laughs> El Zarape, one of my one of my favorite experiences at El Zarape is um, it was actually back in 2012 because oh, I'm a Barry okay. alum, so right. okay. I I was Makes here sense. during the time that I was an undergrad and then came back to teach in 2013. But my brother-in-law is also a Barry alum, so he graduated in 2012, and the night before his college graduation, <laughs> um, all of his friend group, like pretty much everybody that was graduating went to El Zarape. And this was before they did the like the bar crawl in downtown Rome for graduating seniors. So they didn't have that kind of kind of tradition. So it was like everybody just packs into El Zarape and I cannot it's El Zarape in downtown Yeah, Rome? it's the one like on Broad. Street? Yep, okay. it's the one on Broad. Um, and so it was packed like to the point where you couldn't move and there were, you know, graduating seniors everywhere all celebrating like taking lots of shots of tequila. <laughs> they were off campus, off campus, right? And they were all of age, no so it was fine. Worries. Nothing illegal happening. Um, lots of shots of tequila going on, but it was so crowded in that space that they ran out oh, of seating, awesome. absolutely. Yeah. And so I remember the air conditioning couldn't keep up with like how many people were in there and it was warmer, it was one of those warmer Mays. So it's late at night, the night before my brother-in-law graduates and my husband and I had gone down there um, and we were hanging out with some mutual friends in El Zarape and like celebrating with, with my brother-in-law. Um, and the only table that was left in the restaurant wasn't even like a full table. So it was like half of a booth and then they had the table and then they had just like pulled up a couple of chairs uh -huh. that didn't really match um, because it wasn't actually supposed to be a full booth. Mm -hmm. And the table was like kind of rickety mm -hmm. and it was like 90 degrees in there and everything was sticky from all the tequila. Yeah. Um, and I was surrounded by drunk graduating seniors. Um, it was an interesting experience. Sure I will say like it was real lively and mm -hmm. um, I was the DD that night, so then I had to take everybody home. Um, so I was not partaking in all okay. of the fun, but it seemed like everybody that was there was having a grand old time sure. at El Zarape. And you got to witness all of it. And I got to watch all of it, all of it yeah. from my seat at this partial booth that wasn't even supposed to be an actual booth <laughs> in the 90 degree restaurant. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's those are my memories from that. I, I've been back to El Zarape a lot. It's one of, it, it, like it consistently places in that best of Rome mm -hmm. um, alongside Las Palmas for Mexican restaurants. Um, and, and the food's good. Um, I will say their vegetarian options aren't as good as La Perilla and are Las they Palmas. Are compared to other Mexican restaurants? They've got options. I just don't think the quality of it is as good. So like they'll have like a mushroom and spinach quesadilla or something like that, or like a bean burrito, but it's not, Simple, quite basic. as good right okay. like my go-to for a vegetarian meal at La Perea um, at lunch it's the combination number three I can't remember what it is at dinner but it's a bean burrito and a cheese enchilada with rice mm. and so I'm able to have that because it doesn't have the chicken products right. in it and I know it's safe and it's delicious mm, so okay. there you go there's my scoop in the Mexican restaurants okay I'll have to try it. karaoke at Las Palmas so if you're wanting that and karaoke at Las Palmas is always like um old people in cowboy hats. Ooh, so okay. like, not like drunk college student karaoke. Mm -hmm. It's very much- Like laid back. Yeah, yeah. old people okay. singing old country songs, okay. but still so much fun. Okay. So Las Palmas for karaoke, La Perea for the quality of food. El Zarape if you want a really warm party on a May evening. Alrighty, mm -hmm. that sounds fun. Mm -hmm. okay. I will keep that in mind. Now moving along, mm -hmm. 
So we have also a lot of Italian restaurants. Yes, yes we and do. So we have Olive Garden, we have Provino's, we have Bella Roma, mm -hmm. we have Roma Mia, mm -hmm. and we have Mellow Mushroom. Mm -hmm. So what should we start with? Uh, okay, I'll just go ahead and talk about the chains first because okay. I think those are easy ones to get out of the way. Mm -hmm. So Mellow Mushroom, it's a chain. You can get them all over the place. Solid pizza. Okay. My kids absolutely love it. Like they love Mellow Mushroom. And I think one of the reasons they love Mellow Mushroom is that there's like this car booth. So it's a booth, oh, but it's shaped okay. like a car. Yeah. And they love being it's able to sit in the car. It's a restaurant inside. Yes. It's, just, it's a lot going on, mm -hmm. but it's really unique. Yeah. yeah, it's really fun. So like the atmosphere is, is a lot of fun. Um, we went to Mellow Mushroom on Mountain Day weekend oh. this year. Um, and packed that weekend. it was so that. packed. Yeah. Like I never get to go out, but I had a babysitter that night. Um, and so I was out with, it was my brother and sister-in-law because it was my brother-in-law's 10 year reunion for Mountain Day. So we were out with him and then a bunch of other friends and went to Mellow and saw so many Barry alumni. Like I barely had the chance to, to get yeah. food because we were just kind of like constantly mm. talking to people. Um, and it was a really fun, vibrant atmosphere. So. Food is decent, like it's what you're gonna find at any other Mellow Mushroom, pretty solid pizza, but the atmosphere is a lot of fun. Um, and if you want to drink alcohol and are of age to be able to drink alcohol, they've got a pretty solid beer list there too. Um, they also have craft root beer, which my children love. So that's my opinion on Mellow. Okay. Do you, do you ever go out there? I've been there maybe like twice. Okay. And like, I do enjoy it. Um, it's typically like very crowded. Yeah. So it's not like my go-to pizza right. place. If I just want pizza, I'll probably just get something like to go, you know? Yep. Makes so, perfect sense. Yeah. But I do enjoy um, Mellow Mushroom's pizza. Well, and it's gonna be way more expensive than what yeah. you would get from a regular pizza chain like a Pizza Hut or a Papa mm -hmm. John's. Um, that's that's the one thing about Mellow is yeah. like when, that's not a place to just get like a quick to go pizza right. because you're still gonna be ending up spending like $17 mm -hmm. for a single pizza. That's a place where you go and split a pizza with some friends exactly. and, and hang yeah. out. Yeah. Um, then the other change you mentioned was Olive Garden. Olive Garden. Yes. Mm -mm. Nope, nope. No, I, <laughs> I no, hate Olive I Garden agree. so much. Yeah, I just never really understood the hype with Olive Garden. Mm -mm. I hear a lot about like the breadsticks and like the pastas, but it's like, is it that good quality? No. Mm -mm. Like you can look at so many Italian restaurants in whatever area, whatever city you're in, and Olive Garden is gonna be like bottom tier. I agree 100%. Yeah. Um, so I, I was a server in a few different restaurants when I was in grad school. And we'd actually had a, a chef at one of the fine dining restaurants that I was a server at who in past experience had worked in an olive garden. And he just straight up said like, everything they cook there is from frozen. Like yeah. nothing is really fresh. Um, everything you can tell. Yeah, you really yeah. can. 